Hey guys, Reese here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you actively buying rental property, investment property, looking at maybe a second home, or those of you working through the pre-approval process, these last couple weeks were probably a little bit disappointing for you. I'm closing a cash out refinance on my latest investment property and I locked the rate like 75 days ago or so. Yes, it's taken that long to cash out this property um, at a 2.65% interest rate, crazy. And a purchase loan, a por purchase mortgage will usually have a lower interest rate than say a cash out refinance. And so you'd expect maybe a two and a half or something on, this is a multifamily property, a duplex. However, if you've been paying attention to the news, paying attention to the mortgage market, we see that interest rates have just skyrocketed over the last few weeks to the point where I'm getting pre-approved for another purchase. And the best rate I've found, because I have uh, relationship pricing with a bank, is 4%, 3.9 maybe if I'm lucky. And worst case, some of my pre-approval uh, rates or my quotes have been 4.75. So pretty much a 2% jump from a few weeks ago. What happened over those last couple weeks? Well, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about just that and what I think these higher interest rates mean for the real estate market in general. So guys, if you're interested in that, stick around to the end of today's video. Like and subscribe if you're new to the channel, really appreciate all the support and leave your comments down below as well as we go out throughout this video on what you think is gonna happen with the real estate market over the next maybe six to 12 months. With that said, let's dive into it, guys. Now, I first have to say that, man, we are spoiled right now. Interest rates are at historical lows, even with the higher interest rates today than a few weeks ago. If you look back over the last 10, 20, 30 years, we are historically very low. And even if you consider a few years ago, when I first moved to Columbus from Cleveland, Ohio, and bought my first rental property, I purchased that property, a duplex, that was owner-occupied for a 4.625 interest rate uh, in 2018. So substantially higher than they even are today. And nowadays we are pretty spoiled with these mid twos, threes, mid three interest rates to the point where investment property prices have just skyrocketed over the last couple of years. Now these last couple of weeks, I've started analyzing a lot of rental properties. I'm looking for a good Burr investment for me. Uh, since I wrapped up the last one, I'm renovating one right now, but I'm ready to go. I'm ready to buy another one. So. I've been analyzing a lot of deals and these deals that would have been good a few weeks ago and are still probably good deals, they need to be financed differently. You need a lower loan to value or you know that burn method is just not looking as good because if you take out the same amount of money on the refinance when you're all done to get all your cash out of the deal, the interest rate is just too high to the point where the cash flow does not look good. You know, interest on your mortgage is one of your highest property expenses aside from property taxes. And therefore that one to 2% hike in interest rates over the last few weeks is a substantial hit to your cash flow, making deals just not look as good that looked phenomenal a couple weeks ago. So why are we seeing this change in interest rates so dramatically over the last few weeks? Well, Fannie Mae has tightened their lending guidelines when it comes to investment property and secondary homes. And these new guidelines go into effect April 1st However, banks are starting to react to it, you know, beforehand. And what Fannie Mae has said is that they used to allow 14% of their loans to be investment properties or secondary homes. And now they're cutting that in half to around 7%. That means Fannie Mae will buy half as many conforming loans from banks. And therefore banks are already tacking on about 2% on top of their interest rates to account for the fact that they may not be able to resell these loans after they lend the money to the client. See, many banks offer what's called conforming loans. These are loans that adhere to the guidelines that Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac uh, put out there and the guidelines that allow the bank, if they follow those guidelines, to resell that loan to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac and therefore they make a little profit, get their money back and can lend that money back out again. 
Most banks don't hold these loans on their books, and if they did, that'd be called a portfolio loan. And so the fact that these banks might get stuck with a loan that Fannie Mae doesn't want to buy afterwards is why banks are compensating for their risk by adding a couple extra interest points onto that interest rate. So what do these higher rates mean for the real estate market? Normally we'd see a adjustment in interest rate affect the real estate market in say 60 to 90 days. People have people that are in contract have already had their rate locked and we won't see that pricing affect the market until all those have closed. We get some more deals in contract and comps start to come onto the market at these higher interest rates and therefore lower prices. And so in a pretty even buyer sellers market, I'd expect to see investment prices either stall or maybe pull back just a few percent to account for that change in interest rate. See, people who qualified for a $500,000 investment purchase at say a 2.5% interest rate, well now they can only buy a $368,000 investment at a 5% interest rate. That just goes to show how dramatic a couple interest rate points is when it comes to how much you can qualify for and those two payments are the exact same, the $500,000 at 2.5% and the $368,000 at 5% are just under $2,000 a month principal and interest. However, I'm not personally convinced, and I'd love your opinion on this in the comments down below, but I'm not personally convinced we'll see much of a pullback or even stall in prices in markets where population growth is substantial and demand for housing is substantial. One of those areas being Columbus, Ohio, where I'm located. See, right now in Columbus, as well as most of the country, it is a seller's market, a very substantial seller's market. In Columbus, 11,864 new homes or apartment units came on the market last year in 2020. However, it's estimated that every year, 14 to 21,000 people move to Columbus. And so there's a housing deficit of three to 11,000 units a year. And so there's such strong demand for housing and investment property that I think what we really might see in Columbus and probably around the country is a substantial increase in rental rates. I don't see, I don't think we'll see a substantial change in investment property prices because there's such a strong demand for investment property right now looking out over the next five to 10 years as well as it's projected Columbus. I think the population is projected to grow a million uh, people into 2050 or something like that. So um, a lot of investors are still very hopeful for the Columbus market over the next 10 years or so. And therefore, I think landlords are just going to have to push the new expense onto the renters and increase rental rates. Or I could also see cap rates compress and investors just eating this new expense if rent cannot be increased to cover those new costs. However, there's such a strong demand for quality apartment units and not enough supply, and so I think rent will, will just continue to increase substantially. That's my take on this situation. I'd love to hear your guys in the comments down below. Um, what are you seeing in your market? What do you think is gonna happen over the next six to 12 months? I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I'm still relatively new to real estate. I've been in the market three years. I think I know what I'm doing for the most part, uh, but I'm learning every day. So I'd love to hear your opinion, guys. With that said, that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.